application? Oh. Yeah, and I'm out that day too. Okay. So the 20th would be the... Any other date possibilities? Are there, are there other dates? How about the 26th? 26th is open for me. I can make the 26th work. Okay, that's all day, right? During the day. Um, what time does it start again? It'll I be a, a 9 to okay. 2.45. I, I can do that one. Jen, does the 26th work for, work for you? The 26th it does work for me. Okay. I'm okay with the 26th as well, too. If there is a pressing item that you would like to have added to the agenda, please notify Pete of that. Um, otherwise, we will... Um, I appreciate the, the tentative schedule you set. It looks like a fun-filled, very event-filled and very informative day, I think, that will uh, bring more cohesion to this board and, and definitely uh, we'll learn some there. So May 26th, and Pete will finalize the agenda. Like I said, if there's any pressing item that you would like to have added to that, please let Pete know so he can accommodate that on the schedule. All right, moving on to... Anything else before I go on, maybe? Is there anything I forgot, guys? Student representative reports. Elise, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for having me. Okay, so I have reports from several of the schools. Consuelo sent me the report from DOHS, so I'll start there. Um, they began their ELA ESPA testing and will be doing math this week. Administrator and counselors are having senior meetings with all parents to make them aware of their students' graduation status, and there are several seniors who will be coming up short this semester. DOH has applied for ALE Accelerated Grant through OSPI and are hoping um, to receive consideration for this grant. The money will be used to help students earn credit that may have been lost during COVID, during the COVID shutdown. Um, the three areas that the money will focus on will be uh, caris carousel curriculum and planning, classroom supplies, and PE cardio equipment. May 4th is CBHA health screenings for their students free of charge. And May 19th and 20th, they're doing their senior presentations. Now, if I can find the other school reports, give me just a second. Okay, at Scootney, they had a color run and Earth Day celebration on Friday. The color run was part of their PTA fundraiser. I saw some pictures possibly on Facebook. I'm not <laughs> sure where I saw them, but they, the kids were super cute. Um, Earth Day activities consisted of a variety of stations to learn about their planet and con conservation. Students and teachers have been focused on ensuring students are working hard and getting ready for their ESPA testing, which begins May 10th. They have many events planned coming up in the next six weeks, including field day, field trips, assemblies, and graduations. And the excitement of the end of the year has begun. At the preschool, they recently gave the kindergarten assessment, so they'll have that data available within the next few weeks. Staff helped with kindergarten registration and the kids are ready for the warm weather to engage in more outdoor activities. Spring Family Fun Day is coming May 23rd. At OHS, FBLA, the FBLA chapter went to Spokane for state competition April 20th through the 23rd. They had 10 OHS students that competed and the students that reached the final were finals were um, Stephen Carmona with Intro to Business presentation, Melissa Sanchez and William Harvey with a sales presentation, Matthew Perez with Intro to Business communication and impromptu speaking, and Gilbert Gomez with client service. And then the students that earned placement were Melissa Sanchez and William Harvey, Matthew Perez um, for both of his presentations. And then this was a first year FBLA of FBLA for all the students except for Gilbert, so their first year participating. And then the advisors are Angela Cuss and Kathy Van Landingham, and Terry Perez accompanied the students. We also had spring sports begin in full, sp in full swing, sorry, and both the boys soccer and girls softball ranked top 10 in the state, and they're quite interesting to watch. 
Um, at Wahidis, students and teachers are making the final push to the end of the school year by working hard and celebrating success. Uh, many students enjoyed Earth Day activities last Friday and some students received recognition for attendance. This coming week, students will be recognized for academic progress and strong character words at, at an assembly. The spring music concert will be held on April 28th during the day. It's gonna be a wonderful concert that parents are encouraged to attend and they get to recognize their amazing secretaries on Wednesday for the National Administrative Professional Day and they would not be successful without them. Um, I had a report for McFarland but it comes from my sister and she was gone when I left so <laughs> I don't have that. Um, but then I also wanted to share just a couple things that have been going on lately. Um, so Logan contacted me, Logan from WASDA, sorry, contacted me about an equity experience, which is essentially an equity conference with AWSL, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, but um, it's a Zoom meeting and just in regards to equity. And so they have two panels their only two panels are with students, and so I'm going to be participating in that on the 18th, and I'm working on getting information for any of you guys that want to join that Zoom. And then, sorry, um, at NSBA, um, the panel that I presented on with Logan, that was our first, um, release of the <coughs> ascent, uh, I can't think of the official name for it, but with the Student Representative Network for Washington State, we've created essentially like a training and just guide for new student representatives. And so we released that at NSBA. And um, so it's available through WASDA if any of you guys wanna see it now, but Consuelo and I are working to tweak that just a little bit for our district and then we're hoping to use that as like a training for our student reps coming in. So we have that to look forward to. And that was all I had unless you guys have questions. I just have a comment and a bit of learning for all of us. AWSL is the um, Association of Washington Student Leaders and it's sponsored by AWSP which is the Association of Washington School Principals. So it's the Principals Association, um, so WASDA, the Director's Association, WASDA, the, the Administrator's Association, just another um, professional group in our state, and they sponsor this student leadership group. Great, thank you for that report, Elise. Thank you for that, Elise. Moving on to item C1. I will entertain a motion to approve required approvals. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the approvals. I forget where I said it. I motion's, second. Motion's been made by Director Schutte, seconded by Director Prowse. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries five to zero. I'd like to motion that we approve account payables warrant number two. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Director Schutte. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 And the, aye. I will opposed? have to abstain from that vote. Motion carries four to zero with one abstention. Uh, superintendent informational items, and I believe Pete has an introduction. Yeah, so before jumping into my items, I'd like to invite uh, Jenny Hokinson forward. She's our, she was just approved as uh, uh, McFarland Middle School Assistant Principal. So a round of applause for Jenny to welcome her to the team. <laughs> and we're gonna ask her just to take the mic and, and just share with you for a moment. <laughs> okay, I can be super loud if you need me to. <laughs> um, I'm super excited and um, the interview process was amazing. I am super excited to work with your McFarland staff. They were fantastic um, to talk to and um, I think that we're going to make a great team. Um, I'm really excited to work with Carlos. And, um, and support him in his new adventure of being the head principal there. And um, I'm so thankful for the opportunity. 
you guys have given me, and I just live over the hill. I, I'm kind of transplanting over from North Franklin School District, and so, um, but I have an Othello address, so I guess that's <laughs> good, right? So anyways, I'm super excited to get to know the community, and as what I've seen here tonight has been amazing. Um, I'm thrilled for your drum line. That is awesome, and so you guys sound like you have some really great things going, and hopefully I can bring a great energy to the, the middle school there and we can get some stuff done and, and bring some excitement back. Awesome. Or more excitement, I don't know if they're <laughs> gone. Awesome. Do you guys have any questions for me? Well, we just welcome you. Welcome. Congratulations. Right. Thank you. Looking Thank forward you. To Thank you. Look forward to working with all of you. Awesome. All right. Uh, th uh, three items in uh, superintendent informational items that I'll need to report on. The last board meeting, I uh, made a commitment to provide you with a, a description of these patron tours that we've been talking about uh, this school year. I want to acknowledge uh, Gina Bullis and Ed Peterson for their work in partnering, I think particularly with the uh, Ridgefield School District, who has been running these patron tours for um, a number of years. I'm going to pass around just a, a mock-up of what an invitation might look and feel like as I describe um, what what those events, uh, what the purpose is of them, and it's um, really to uh, the participants to understand the programs within the district that they may, may not be familiar with, programs beyond basic ed, um, you know, some of our intervention work, our STEM work, our ELL work, some of the celebrations we should have, and it's also an opportunity to get our stakeholders into our facilities um, to communicate with them and, and to sh an opportunity to share um, what we're proud of and, and what, where we need some help. And, and so that's the gist of, of these um, events. Uh, what the day might feel like, we would, we would invite folks to come in either here to the district office or to the ORTC, um, you know, have coffee or juice or something light in the morning, greet them there, um, and then have a brief presentation by the district. Uh, and, and it might be a particular stakeholder group, group that we bring in. So the one that you're looking at would be if we just invited parents who are new to our district with a kindergartner, you know, can we find 20 parents like that to bring in uh, that kind of group with a particular message that we'd like to share with them? After just a short presentation at, at one of our facilities, then we'd go on a tour. We might visit a couple elementary schools, go to the middle school, visit the high school and DOHS, let them see what we're about. Again, the idea is to address some of the um, linkage that existed in policy governance, to address some of the items that have been brought up by the board as it relates to community forums, and then also to share what's happening in our schools with, with the broader community other than social media. Let's bring them to the site. So I wanted you to, again, I committed to giving you a, a, a brief description of what they would look and feel like. If I get enough head nods or, or some uh, consensus from the board, We'll get one scheduled. Um, and I think like the student leadership group that we have at the high school, you know, we might have a couple board members that participate in these so you can see what they feel like, report back to the, the entire board. Uh, but I think it's an excellent opportunity for us to try something new to connect with the folks in our community. Cool. So we we'll like welcome it. any yeah, questions like or feedback about um, the concept. I absolutely love it. And I commend your commitment to doing this, Pete, and putting this together. It's, I, I think it's great. Yes, yes, yes. To get one, yep. get one plan. Yeah, it's an, anything new, exciting for all of us. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll find a day on the calendar. Uh, it won't be May twenty sixth, but we'll we'll find one to, uh, to to organize. And then uh, I guess the next commitment to the board would be to invite a, uh, get a few board members to attend the first one to see how it goes, and then after that first event, we would provide an update to the entire board. So we'll we'll get a date scheduled, let you know when that is, and then look for a couple of you to part to participate. Okay. Uh, the next one is the school board, um, a draft agenda, and I think that's included um, electronically in the, in the board agenda. Um, I want to talk you through a couple of these and <laughs> get some head nods on it so that, because um, there's going to be some work for Marisa and I leaving this meeting. So the board self-evaluation and review. Is there a tool that the board has used in the past to, to do that self-evaluation, and would you like me to reference the same one and provide those resources for you. WASDA has one, and I'm sure there's one in our files. Um, we have
have used in the past, but it's basically, I think last year we used WASDAS directly. They sent it to me, and we just used exactly that. Okay, so Jen, do you want to take care of coordinating that, or would you like us to do that? Sorry, trying to hit the button. <laughs> um, I think it would be better if it came directly from you or Marissa. Um, I mean, I can get Waz to send it to me, and then I can give it to you. How about that? Okay, that'll work, yeah. If you'll get access to it, and then we'll, we'll put it together in a format that make it available to the rest of the board. Is that good with everyone else to use that same, so that we have the same format that we've used in the past? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is um, this board individual leadership self-awareness. So we've had about 10 members of the central office team go through um, uh, an assessment uh, called the Indigo Assessment. It's about understanding what motivates you in your work. And we're going to use it to, to help inform our meetings, to help inform our leadership, to help us identify um, where our blind spots might be and how others can help us um, with the leadership challenges that we face. We found it particularly insightful uh, in this idea about self-awareness as you lead others. Uh, we were wondering if the board was interested in, in going through that assessment. So you'd have to do it outside of the meeting, probably take you 30 to 45 minutes, and you're just answering questions. And it's just your opinion or how you feel about things. And then at the end, it'll generate this assessment and this description of who you are as a person, what motivates you, what challenges you. Um, we thought it would be a good connection to what we're going to ask our administrators to do, and so some overlap between your work and their work. But we also thought it would be a good opportunity for you to gain a deeper understanding of who you are as individuals. Um, we just wanted to know if you would be willing to do that and if you want that to be part of our day to discuss those results like we do with our administrators. I think yes. I'm any, up for it. any part of good leadership training includes something like that. So I, I think that's a great idea. Definitely. Okay, so we'll, we'll arrange for that. We'll get you a link, and we'll get it sent your way. And uh, uh, there are no wrong answers to the assessment. And, and to make it valuable for you and everyone else, it's just um, what's your gut tell you about that, that question? So looking forward to that conversation. The, uh, the next chunk will be uh, just a review of the goals for, for the OSD this last year, my, my individual goals as a superintendent, and then a summary of the building goals that were shared with you in August. After that, here's a chunk where uh, I'm going to need some feedback, and that's around superintendent evaluation. Um, so we've looked at some um, survey options to share with the um, administrative team, and I think we had talked about that structure. Uh, so we're prepared to put a sample together and share with you to see if it meets what you'd be looking for. Uh, and then we also thought about the possibility of a focus group which wouldn't include me or Marisa, but we would set up the conversation for you and the directors and administrators to have a conversation and generate feedback for me and my performance. Just wanted some, some feedback about whether or not that seems like an appropriate process for you guys to gather information about um, how folks feel related to my performance. Yes. I love that. Okay, so we'll get this survey uh, generated. I know we've uh, fielded the questions. The questions come from the CEE survey, Center for Educational Effectiveness, and there's another, there's, so there's a, the vast majority of it, so 90% of it is about me, and then there's about 10% about the central office, and, and just some indicators that we're looking for. But then the focus group would really be board driven, and so either you need to come up with questions, or if you want me to, to generate some that might prompt some thinking from the administrators, I can do that. I'll just rely on Mike to let me know that over the next couple weeks, okay. and uh, we'll, we'll create an opportunity for you to meet with them. Uh, the last two chunks would be about uh, sharing the graduate profile and highlighting that work again as where the system is headed and the vision for the school district, and Jessica Schenk is going to lead that work. Uh, and then board goals and the board calendar for the year at the end. And, and I think today, you know, we'd, we'd add... Uh, the scholarship discussion in that area, and what other items might come from the board. So that's what the day would look and feel like right now, and, and we can add more detail to this agenda um, if you're telling me to go ahead and do that. I like the format and the structure of it. I do too. Okay, so we'll, we'll press on with that. We'll add some additional detail, and um, 
May 9th is the next meeting. So we'll bring a more uh, complete uh, agenda on that day with some additional detail, the resources that you're going to need for each of those sections, and perhaps some of the presentations actually built out for that meeting. It's going to be on the 26th, and we'll confirm a location on the 9th as well. Okay. Uh, the next item is related to uh, consideration for bell, bell times for uh, the next school year. Uh, Marion Shade, uh, John Wiseman, principals and assistant principals, uh, our food service staff, uh, Jeanette Root and uh, Mandy McDonald, have been working uh, this past year um, to deal with some of the federal and state requirements as it relates to food service, transportation, and you know, the complexity of start times for schools. So um, what we'd like to do is share with you some significant changes that are going to occur with the bell times for next year and some questions you're, you're probably going to get from some of our patrons and stakeholders about um, where we're headed with this work. Because when you think about your own life and um, start time for your kids at Scutney and one's going to be at McFarland, uh, your grandkids, other people in the system, right? It, it makes a difference to folks. It's also particularly important to our employees, um, those who live out of town, those who have small children. So it's not uh, a de decision or determination that we take lightly. Mm -hmm. And it's taken a lot of work over several months for them to consider what are the possibilities. So I want to highlight some of the major changes for you. Um, the elementary schools would be starting and releasing their students 30 to 40 minutes later than they have this year. So we're going to push back those times. And I'll explain some of the thinking behind that process. MMS uh, would be starting and releasing st students about 25 minutes earlier. So they're going to they're gonna jump up just a bit. And OHS and DOHS, they would be starting and releasing approximately 50 minutes earlier. So a much earlier start for our secondary students. Now, um, when we were dealing with COVID, uh, I remember a meeting specifically where I shared this concept with you about um, wicked problems. And that's when what can be seen as a solution for one group around a particular issue or idea has consequences for another. So changing the elementary start times, what does that mean for families and staff? Changing the secondary start time, right? That, and at both ends of this, it's, it's not a problem that's ever fully solved. So you might hear from folks, I've already heard from them, who say, why are you doing that? And then you're going to hear from some that say, what took you so long? Why, why didn't you do that months ago? But it is a very difficult problem. And, and so I want to talk with you about some of the thinking that the group shared with me. So one of the primary reasons for the change is that we need an extended gap between MMS and OHS and DOHS start times in the elementaries. We need 45 minutes. I think it's currently around 25. And so why do we need that gap? Well, we, we're losing three drivers for next year. And if we lose another one or we have other issues, we just don't have the manpower. And it's not, we're recruiting as much as we can. We have a job fair scheduled. Um, we're going to have a bus out here that people can practice driving around the parking lot. It's a, an issue across the country, staffing and finding bus drivers. And, and it, it's an issue for all employers. How do you find employees? But bus drivers in particular are a challenge. And so to make sure we can provide as much service as possible, um, we have to tier the routes. And so it requires that we do this. Um, so what are some things that are going to be improved, we think, based on this service model? One is that MMS and the high school students, they'll be transported separately from elementary. Currently, the K-6 and the 7-8 are on the same buses. We're going to be able to separate that a little bit by, by making this adjustment. Um, having the secondary students start a little bit earlier and released earlier means that, that they should lose less instructional time if they're being released for athletics or activities. Oh, yeah. There's certainly an impact there on some of those students. Um, now, are there some concerns? Absolutely. We know that having younger siblings at home before school is going to be an issue, but it's also an issue at the other end. It's an issue after school. Um, a couple of the, of the legislative impacts or mandates that are forcing our hand on this, one is with breakfast after the bell. Um, so there are specifics to drop off times and when you have to serve breakfast after the bell. And there's also a cutoff time. So when you think about our Monday late start days, um, we have to have breakfast after the bell completed by 10 a.m. Uh, and if we bring the, the, sec the elementary students in later, um, we're not going to meet that window. We're not going to be able to um, 
to address the needs in food service. So there's some regulations that play into this determination. One of the consistent concerns that I've heard from folks that has been shared is about the research around adolescent sleep time and this idea that um, for high school students in particular, there are benefits to um, starting school later. Well, much of the research, uh, when, you, when you read through it, is actually, well, there's benefits to students sleeping more. So if you, if you comb through it, there's studies on both sides, whether it makes a significant difference. But there's not a strong body of research that it makes a tremendous difference, right? At best, it's neutral. But there was a concept that was consistent in all those research uh, studies that I was able to review around sleep hygiene. And that, that means, do you have a set bedtime? Um, are you on your phone when you go to bed? Is it the last thing you look at? Um, are you using caffeine? Are you having large meals? Are you getting things that we all know and experience as adults that matter for, for high school students as well? So we certainly aren't blind to that concern. Uh, we know that, that asking kids to come in early, we're going to have to think about what does it mean for tardies and absences and those kinds of things. Um, but I talked to some administrators who say if we started school at 11, uh, some kids would still be late. So there's going to be some issues to work through. We want to communicate this early. We, parents have four, four months to kind of plan for it. Um, Ed is going to send out some communication system-wide starting tomorrow. But I wanted the board to be aware of it uh, because I imagine you might hear from some folks on, on both sides of the issue. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to, to ask questions if you needed. So do you have like a set schedule yet? with specific times, or are you just like a roundabout guess? Yeah, we definitely have a set schedule. So um, confirm that today with Marion. Again, this is sort of um, minute to minute, her planning and thinking about how to get, you know, almost 2,000 kids to school every day. So that'll be part of the communication that goes out. It'll, it'll look much like this. Um, it'll be a, uh, you know, a, a data box with the start times and end times, and we'll send that out to families. I mean, there's no easy solution, right? My sister, my nieces and nephews go to school in Moses Lake, and they get a text the night before telling them whether or not the buses are coming the next day. So, I mean, I appreciate that we're thinking this far ahead so that people can be prepared for the fall, because um, it is a problem outside of Othello. I mean, nobody's going to be happy because people don't like change, but um, there, there's nothing we can do about it at the end of the day except get a text the night before to our family saying, sorry, no bus routes tomorrow for your bus. And then we have a much bigger problem. So thank you for thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. and that's I it. I have a couple of questions. Can you go first? Uh, that, that was me, Jen. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. So um, have you looked at what the CB Tech schedule is going to be? Can we still fit a morning and, or an afternoon? of ours in with their schedule. Maybe they are not even that far ahead in, in, in preparing. Yeah, I don't have that data in front of me, but I'm going to make the, the assumption feel good about it that Marion considered CB Tech and the use of our driver for those routes when she was developing this schedule. So I imagine they would be outside of this context, and, and we would continue to offer that opportunity for our students. And then my next question is, are all of the elementary starting at the same time or within a few minutes of each other? For myself having um, students, my own kids, uh, being at in high path at a different campus one day a week or depending on how many children I have in it, um, just knowing that the time's close but maybe not the same, I guess that's the question that I have. Yeah, the start times for Hiawatha, Ludicaga, and Wahidas are all identical, 8.30, and Ludicaga will be starting at 8.20. Or that's bus drop-off time, I'm sorry. Start time for the student day is 8.40 at Hiawatha, Scutney, and Wahidas, and 8.30 at Ludicaga. So within 10 minutes. listed in the personnel and stuff, but thank you for being so forward thinking and thinking about this and getting this on people's schedules now. I really appreciate that, and I think that others do too. Yeah, and, and appreciate that acknowledgement, uh, Jen. Uh, special recognition to Marion Shade. Marion and her team out at, at the 
at the bus garage um, have very, very, very challenging jobs, not only for staffing, but routing, uh, families that move. Um, she has an ama amazing ability to understand what individual families need, uh, where they live, where they move to, who their cousins are. When they didn't get picked up, why not? And her um, depth of knowledge about this system and this work is uh, really remarkable. So um, special shout out to Marion and her team for it, for the hard work and the forward thinking and getting it out to folks so that they have some time to, to plan and process it. So that's the end of my items tonight, Mike. All right. Appreciate the information, Pete. Thank you. Moving on to item D1, we have Hiawatha Elementary here to make a board presentation. We had the privilege of vis visiting the school last Tuesday, so uh, Will, they didn't leave you solo, did they? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I am all alone today. I have to excuse Jesse, who's sick. So she, she wanted to be here, and she, uh, we were prepped, and then she called in this morning and said, I'm going to sleep this morning and be able to make it, and she called me around noon or one, and I told her it doesn't sound like she should make it. <laughs> so she's probably still sleeping. Um, no, we're, we're really excited to be here. Um, really, my goal for this presentation, um, it was great to have you all in the school, and it was great to um, be able to share with you the work that we're doing. And uh, I hope today that we can give you some background on why um, our school is where it's at um, and, and just share with you a little bit of, of the intentionality and the planning and the work that's gone in um, really by every member of our staff um, this year and over the last several years. So um, that's our hope because we're excited for what you saw at Hiawatha and we're excited for what's going on. I'm going to hope my clicker works. Otherwise, Marissa will help me. Oh, it's working. Perfect. All right. So um, what we want to kind of do is, is start um, kind of full circle. Um, in the fall, we shared with you what our goals were for Hiawatha and what our leadership focus was. And we have uh, three things that were, were our focuses. Um, number one is decision-making frameworks, um, and just really establishing a strong basis um, and foundation for how we make decisions and how we um, decide what we're going to do um, at Hiawatha. And then um, increasing intentionality with our collaboration, um, just making more effective use of our collaboration time and really creating systems for that. And then um, giving uh, teachers and really our whole building effective feedback um, because we know and what we talked about at the beginning of the year with our staff it's just that anybody that's excellent at anything um, gets there because they have feedback um, those that, that excel uh, seek that feedback and they receive it and they they use it to to improve so so those are the, our three leader our three focuses um, when you were at Hiawatha we focused on our, our core values um, and we had you all look into those um, those were those are something that we're continuing to try and get deeper and deeper into our into our staff, and it's been really exciting to see them live those out throughout the year. Um, and then our second framework is that improvement framework where teachers and as a staff and as a system, we identify priority standards. Um, what are we trying to teach? What are those most important things? Um, and then data systems that show us how effective we are at, at teaching that. And then with that information, we're able to make targeted instructional developments um, and improve our efforts to, to help students to learn those things. And that's just the cycle that we continuously are on. Um, and this year, as we've moved um, into those data systems and really had a, a, a laser-like focus on those, it's been really exciting, particularly in the second half of the year, to hear our teacher teams talking um, with more focus when you hear that word targeted instructional development. Um, they have a lot more clarity. They're excited for some time this summer. And um, each team is saying, hey, we need to work on this. We're excited to get in there and beef up our instruction um, at those primary grades around reading comprehension, where we focus more on, on, on decoding. We're excited to get in and do X, Y, or Z, and it's based on what they've seen all year with the data, and their just intense work that they've done on, on focusing on data with those data systems, um, which all comes from, oh, we lost it. Do you want to click the next slide? Yeah. <coughs> I guess that's it. Oh, <laughs> Pete wanted a short um, presentation, so. <laughs> all right, um, that all comes from intentional collaboration. So uh, this year we've um, really honed, we've really tried to empower our grade chairs to be instructional leaders. 
Um, we started from the summer. We um, had a, a leadership retreat, and they sat down and they mapped out their year and said, "Hey, we're having these professional um, learning communities every every uh, Monday morning. Our parents are take you know they sacrifice to keep their kids home a little longer so that we can do those, and they really committed to use those and make those intentional. Um, and it's been a, such great outcomes. Um, we, we were debriefing them with them a little bit how that's gone so far just a week or so ago, and they said it's been wonderful. We're not showing up and saying, "Hey, what do we need to talk about today?" There's real clarity. Our team members are prepared with what they need to work on, and, and those things are there. Um, in addition to that, we've added data meetings this year where we have, um, whether they're sub days, some of them start in those PLCs, and then they come after school for some time, um, and sometimes we're subbed out for whole or half days, where um, teachers give interims every um, three or four times a year, and we come together and we look at those interims and the data, and that's where that data and that clarity comes from. So they've been really dedicated to that. Um, and focusing on improving their practice there. And then from all of that, we just see additional team collaboration, whether it's meeting during prep periods um, or meeting after school or just the, the constant flow of information. Those teams are collaborating more and more, and it's becoming natural and normal for them to do so. And they, I think they're recognizing the high leverage that comes with that. So that's been really exciting. And then effective feedback here. I had to throw in a picture. This is the group honoring um, Heather Ochoa, um, getting her Crystal Apple Award. Um, she is an incredible example of someone who embraces feedback. Um, we showed them a video at the beginning of the year of Coach K, who was, is one of the greatest uh, basketball coaches, college basketball coaches, and is retiring this year. And this interview was right before um, his, the first of his last year, and they asked him what his key to success was. Um, and he basically said, hey, I come to work every day with 40 to 50 years of experience, and I treat it like it's my first day. Right? And Heather, I think, is the epitome of that. And our teachers, um, that's, that's what we try to build and foster in our teachers. That's that culture. So I loved this quote that I read recently. Teachers want to make a difference. We come as administrators into their classrooms with that assumption. Um, they want to make a difference. And the feedback they find most useful recognizes that commitment. And in collegial and supportive ways helps them do just that. So we'll be the first to admit that um, this year we've, we've had ups and downs. We've been in classrooms a lot and then we've been in classrooms a little and then we've tried to get in classrooms a lot again. There's things that pull us away from that. Um, but we're continuing to commit and uh, have, have continued to try to foster this relationship with our teachers where they feel comfortable receiving feedback from us, um, growing, asking questions, challenging us, um, and moving forward. So those, are, those were our three focuses for the year. Um, and so what have we seen so far as impact? I'm going to try to unpack some of this data that's on this next slide for you. Um, we're going to look at a little bit, the, the main data that we're going to look at comes from our interims, and then we have a little bit from our STAR assessments as well. So those interims, again, are teacher-created interims um, that um, both ELA and MAP, they create them, they're focused on the standards they've taught so far, and then as they progress, um, those, we add standards. So that assessment gets more and more rigorous as the year goes on. And so that's really important when we, to understand as we look at this data, because we're going to show you proficiency levels um, from the first interim to the last interim in each content area and some growth in those proficiency levels. So I highlighted a couple of grades. Um, I don't know if we're able to move the bottom thing. Wh when we get down there, maybe we can pull it up. Um, so you'll see a couple of grades on the top, and then I'll show you school-wide at the bottom. So on the left-hand side, this is the change in percentage of students that were proficient. Um, so, um, so these are increases on the left-hand side when you don't see a negative. So from the fall and the first interim that these grade levels gave to the, mo the last interim that they've given, kinder and fifth grade both had above 20% more students proficient. And again, that's not just giving them the same test pre and post. That's a more rigorous assessment in the fall. Um, and then on the right-hand side, this is the change in percentage of students well below proficiency. So when we show the graph, those students are normally in red. Those are students well below proficient. So not only do we want to look at, hey, what kids are we moving from that yellow to, to green in that bubble, but are we our kids that are, are, are most needy, those kids that um, um, are well below proficient and really need that acceleration, are we also moving them or are we leaving them behind? And we see that sixth and fifth grade had these massive jumps um, they, they took 20% out and then 18% out of those kids that are well below and moved them to, to closer to proficiency. And then school-wide, we, we see a growth. We had some, some grade levels that were a little more level, but school-wide, we still see some growth of 7.8% and, and then 6.3% moving out of that well below. This, was, this next slide is we're going to stick with ELA for a little while before jumping into math. Oh, it's whenever you click on Zoom that I lose my clicker. So if you click back on that, we'll get it. 
Oh, there we go. So um, this is in the star assessment. So we have a uh, we have a score range where we consider it a year's worth of growth, um, and that's based on input that the star gives us. Um, so this is the percentage of students at Hiawatha who had already made a year's worth of growth um, in the ELA assessment, and that's just from the fall assessment to December. So in about a half a year, we've already had 46.6% of our students that had made a year's worth of growth. Um, we anticipate these students to make much more than a year's worth of growth, and we expect many more students to already be in a year's worth of growth when we give that assessment again here in the next month or so. So that was really exciting and promising for us as we reflect on the leadership moves that we've made and the staff moves that we've made. Um, jumping into math, we see similar things, maybe not quite as dramatic, um, but we highlighted a couple of grade levels again. Uh, first grade and second grade moved um, above 15%, 15 to 20% of their students um, into that proficient range, again, on a more rigorous assessment from their first to their last one, and close to 15%, um, both of those grades out of the well below proficiency, um, nearer to proficient. And then school-wide, we're a little bit flatter here um, uh, in math, but still showing growth um, around, and that's with a range of grade levels. Um, and then, but in STAR, there we go. In STAR, we, we're really close again with 40% of our students that have already made a year's worth of growth in, in December. So we're really excited. Um, We'll, you'll see in our, in our next set of slides that by no means do we feel like um, we've arrived, um, but we're really, really excited to, to make, to see these assessments, to take the ESPA here in a month, in a couple of weeks. I keep thinking it's a month or so off, but it's really uh, next week we start our, our ESPA assessments. Um, we feel really confident that even after these two years of pandemic, we're not going to see um, huge lags. We're going to see that our students are progressing and that we, our, our staff has stepped up because they really did. They sacrificed a lot over the last several years and they jumped full on, head on into this year to ready to, to make gains um, with our students and meet their needs. All right, so what does that mean as we go into the next school year and finish out this spring? Um, our focus is continuity, growth, and support. So this continuity piece is really important for Hiawatha. We've, we've spoken several times to the upheaval that they've had um, through COVID and then previous to COVID through just um, administrators uh, moving forward. So we're really excited to report that the next big initiative um, at Hiawatha is just to stay the course, right? That they're not gonna have like a new, um, you know, uh, new shiny thing to focus on next year and to learn. It's really to stay the course with those things and become more efficient and more clear with what we're doing. And then in that, just grow our capabilities um, and that us as administrators just to provide support. So just to give a little bit more clarity on that, um, we recently looked at a graphic at a leadership team um, where um, initiatives in a building were, were represented by arrows and you had some arrows that crossed each other. Those are conflicting um, initiatives. Um, and then you had uh, arrows that were pulling apart from each other where those initiatives diverge. Um, and then hopefully you have more arrows that are parallel. And those are, par those are supporting um, initiatives that support one another. And we feel like over the last several years, we've really been able to achieve making our arrows parallel. And our work moving forward is just to stack arrows to find more things that align with our core values, align with our mission and what we believe about kids and what we believe about good instruction, and just to stack those as we are, um, have the capability um, and the capacity as a staff to do those, those things. Um, so we're really focusing on continuity. That's something that we ask ourselves a lot, um, is, is this the right time? Is this the right uh, move? And will, are we ready for that next step? Um, and with that is growth. Um, I loved this quote. This is from kind of the classic book, Good to Great by Jim Collins. Good is the enemy of great, and that is one of the key reasons why we have so little that becomes great. We don't have great schools principally because we have good schools. So if we're, we're really excited, and it's been just such a huge, a wonderful experience for me to work with a staff that's not okay with good being a good school, because um, if that were the case, we could just kind of go into coastal mo coasting mode right now. Um, but Hiawatha is really committed to being great. Um, they're driven. Sometimes we might be a little overly competitive, um, but, but it's, it's fun and it's exciting to be with a staff that really wants to just do more all the time. Um, so, so we're really committing to that and just continuing that growth, continuing that feedback cycle and improving that. It's an area of growth for me as an administrator, which is really exciting. And I love that we have a staff that challenge each other, um, both teachers to administrator, administrator to teacher, 
and come together and push each other in this. So, so we're going to continue with that. Um, and then as, a t as an administrator, this is always my focus. This is a really important value of mine um, is support. And, um, and when I think of supporting and how I support my staff, and so as Jesse and myself and the other um, leadership groups in the, um, down through even our leadership team, as we think about where we go next and how we continue to do this, we want to just continue to, uh, to make this a deeper principle, and it's reciprocal accountability. Um, if school or district leaders are going to hold teachers or principals accountable for something, then those leaders have an equal responsibility that teachers and principals know how to do what they're expected to do, and I would add, have the resources to do so. Um, so that's something that we're really committed to, um, and as we go into next year, that's something that we commit to as we, as we increase um, what we're trying to do is, is to do those things in, in uh, measured ways so that we, ha we continue to build capacity and do that. So, we're really excited for where we're going. We're excited for what we've already achieved, um, mostly because we think it's an indicator of where we're headed. Um, we're not we're not quite quite there yet, um, and we're not happy with where we are. We won't be really until every single kid, um, and we really have that that clear equity um, in our schools that every kid um, from every group and from every family really we know they have a shot um, to achieve what they need to achieve in our building. So. Um, we believe we're, we're on the right track and we're headed there. So um, do you have any questions or comments? My daughter's a kindergartner and she saw this slide at the end up on my TV and she said, oh, you put the Beatles up there. So um, <laughs> we were wondering if you guys had any questions or any comments from our visit and, or from the presentation. Well, I just didn't really enjoyed the visit. Um, I, we got to observe the fifth and sixth graders competing out on the playground. and. They were so excited. The adrenaline was going great. The, they were so excited. In the other classrooms, we were in the upper classrooms. We went through the math and the science. And, and I thought uh, it's, incent it's incentive for us, too, as a board, to see these kind of things and see the kids just breaking out so much more. So I know your staff loves you, and that's a very compliment because they always seem like they have a lot you know, they put you on a pedestal there. So mm -hmm. I know you put them on a pedestal also, though. I think that's what happens is you all keep thinking of each other. And I think it was a great visit. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know anybody who's been successful at anything when they think, like, I've arrived. <laughs> it's always the what's next. How do I push myself? How do I stretch myself mentality that I think success in any in any instance has that in common that drive to do more and you're it just goes to show like how amazing your staff is because they haven't had consistent leadership like you said before um covid but they still like kept it together and then now that they have a really great leader in you um and jesse i mean the sky's the limit and they're they've already like just banded together to rise to the occasion and what's next this isn't good enough yes we made gains but we still have to do more and the resilience of you and your staff is really really inspiring so kudos to you guys like i don't i don't think anybody in public education or private education is feeling like we've arrived no no issues especially after the last two years so i commend your guys's spirit and tenacity in staying after it and caring so deeply and being so passionate I appreciate all of their comments while we were there and again tonight, like just shows their commitment to the district and to the kids. So I appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you. And yeah, I fully agree. I, I, several years ago we would, when I came in, we, we shared that sentiment with them a lot that I was their fourth principal in four years and any lesser staff, any lesser building would kind of be in disarray at that point, but they weren't. They were, they were standing there ready and they had held things together. So huge. We see ourselves just as like cheerleaders a lot of times, mm -hmm. just sitting back and trying to give them what they need um, because they're, they're a great staff. They're a great group of people. I just absolutely loved it. It was great. My group, we started in the upper, the fifth and sixth grade and got to see them with their remote control projects out there so cool. and measuring the uh, playground area and figuring out the square footage and then we ended up uh, the last visit was a kindergarten class and what a great class uh, but what a great way to finish the visit too uh, with kindergartners and I absolutely loved it I could see how much your 
students love you guys. Uh, I think in every classroom uh, we went into, it was straight to just here are you to give you guys hugs. It was like we weren't even there. And it was just absolutely great. Thank you. Yeah, I'd be remiss if I don't, you know, commend you on the cohesiveness that every single group that we met with feels. Uh, I know I mentioned it that day, the family-like, the team-like atmosphere that's created at Hiawatha right now, um, you're to be commended for. Every single one of the, uh, the folks at Hiawatha, they, they were awesome. Um, the genuineness, um, I think people didn't hold back. People said what they needed to say, and that was great. Um, but you could definitely feel, uh, I mean, the tension in the room wasn't tension. It was like a heartfelt feeling of, of we're doing what we're doing because we love our kids, and that's all we can ask of you all. Uh, you and your team, uh, I, I said it that day. I mean, is there anybody that doesn't know who Jesse is? Because they would, every classroom we'd go to, and it's like, when do you do the other stuff? I mean, are you in these rooms all day, every day? It was great to see. Um, I get, you said you, you go on feedback. You use feedback a lot, and you, you challenge us even with the clipboard and, and you know assessing you all on, on your core values. And I had a comment for every single one of your uh, values there, and uh, I, I meant it. Um, you all have established a culture that is uh, – people have bought into it, and, and I, I commend you for that. Um, I, I, I appreciate your, your genuineness. Uh, acknowledging uh, where you're at and at the same time saying, hey, we feel poised, but we haven't arrived. Uh, like Lindsay says, we'll, we'll never arrive. Anybody who says that they've learned it all is lying to themselves. We'll never stop learning no matter what we're doing in life. Uh, so I just want to commend you and your staff, uh, your, your office staff, every single one of the teachers, the parapros, custodians, anybody uh, within the sound of my voice, if you work at Hiawatha Elementary, we do appreciate you. We thank the world of you, and we thank you uh, for what you're doing, uh, impacting the lives of the kids that attend your schools each and every day. Thank you very much. It was a great visit. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, I'll add, add a couple comments to Will. I have uh, certainly enjoyed the, the partnership with him over the last couple of years. We, um, we meet pretty consistently, and we don't always talk about work. Uh, sometimes we're talking about other things, and I think that's one uh, particular strength of Will as a leader. Um, I think the teachers at Hiawatha feel seen and heard by he and Jesse. And, and that's what most people want from leadership. And so I have appreciated watching him um, connect with, with those group of folks and to push that system forward. And uh, you know, it wouldn't be a conversation between Will and I if I didn't push him a little bit. And so I, I guess in, in listening to his presentation and thinking about the arrows and getting them all going in the same direction, I want to see where those arrows land this year so we can decide how much further they're going to get next year. And, uh, uh, I look forward to that. So it was an enjoyable visit. Uh, I've enjoyed my last four or five opportunities to meet with the folks at Hiawatha. Uh, I feel welcome there and, and feel comfortable there, and, and much of it due to um, to the support that I received from Will and Jesse. So that idea about uh, reciprocity and reciprocal accountability exists between between Will and I, and and I see that between him and his staff. So it's um, I think they're going the right direction. It's 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 fun to watch. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, moving on to item E1, policy review. There are a couple of DOPs in there with the procedures. These are first readings. Um, Pete, are we to suggest any changes, or this is just, I assume it's informational? Well, they're, they're new items, so it's just an opportunity for okay. you to take a look at them and then to, to ponder them, and then we'll uh, continue to bring them up in policy review. But just wanted the board to have an opportunity to to think through those, and then if, if you want to bring questions tonight or at the next session, we can okay. certainly have some folks to uh, consider thinking about them. Tim Taff is, is here tonight, and so if you have any questions tonight, we can certainly have him uh, discuss those or introduce them if you, if you feel the need this evening. Does anybody have any questions? I know. I do a have a question. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> so, um, the, the policy 4311 uh, it talks about um, training for security and SROs and the such um, safety officers for their first year or having it within their first year. I, but it doesn't ever address anything about ongoing trainings. 
And so that was just my question. Yes. Is there ongoing <laughs> trainings, I guess? Yes. Um, this is Tim speaking. Yes, we're going to have, uh, in fact, we're, we're already have them registered for a conference for this summer. The trainings that um, are identified are 13 elements that are a must if you're going to be a security. They've kind of lumped everybody. It used to be an SRO. And Tim, could you get the mic closer to you? Sure. <laughs> it used to be um, kind of two groups. There was an SRO group and a security group, and now the new legislation has kind of put them together f as security or safety um, for the districts. And um, so these 13, there's 13 elements um, that these um, safety staff are supposed to know. And once they have taken that either online or in-person training, they can continue that training to uh, reinforce it. There's changes that come uh, like any learning um, yearly. And then um, we're also taking them to um, a conference in Spokane this, uh, this summer. It'll, again, reinforce that, uh, what's new, um, what changes are coming, what is the new legislation going, how is that new legislation gonna impact them? So yes, it is ongoing. I would prefer this policy to reflect that since, I mean, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I assume like every other um, position, there's just ongoing constant training, but I would prefer that it said in some way, somehow, uh, I'm sure this is just basically like the state law. This is the mandatory stuff, but I would prefer it to say, and ongoing training, maybe not defined, but it True. just keeps talking about they have to be trained mm -hmm. within that first time period, but it never references ongoing training. And I would prefer it, especially since I assume that it's being done and now having confirmation from you, Tim, that somewhere it says ongoing training will take place. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Moving on, thank you for that, Tim. Moving on to item F1, upcoming events. There is a table there. Is anybody, we can, we can strike the uh, special board meeting on the 23rd for the book study, yep. as we'll be just having a recap during board member discussion at the meeting. And add the 26th in there for the retreat. At the retreat on the 26th. Great, moving on to the board self assessment of the meeting. <coughs> Plus deltas. I'd like to see, I liked to see all the public comment and the public participation and the student achievements that we had tonight earlier in the meeting. And the staff, the and recognition the staff, yeah. of the recognition. students and the staff's achievements. Love that. There's been many times when this boardroom has went very empty and it's nice to see it, see it full. I think we accomplished a lot tonight, so. It was, it was a yes. pretty packed agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we've been here since 5.30, so I think we got through it in a, in a timely fashion as well. I think we, we stayed on track, uh, discussed very, very important information. Um, I Delta would be, we're missing Jen and Consuelo. Hope they feel better soon. And I think our participation tonight was well balanced. I think all of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, spoke at uh, different times and we're pertinent with our uh, comments. So I think it was, participation was well balanced and again, the agenda I think was well planned. It's, it's items mm -hmm. that are uh, relevant to the times that we're uh, going through as a school district and information that needs to be discussed. Anything you need to add, Pete? I, I think it's important that each time we have a, a school present that uh, we acknowledge um, the quality of the presentation. 
I, I think the, the Hiawatha presentation and the consistency with which uh, Will shares the work that's happening there. Um, that's why we're all here. That's why you're on the board, and that's why I do this work. It's for the students that come to our schools every day, and the principals are there every day with their staffs trying to create opportunities for them, and, and we're here trying to make sure we can support the principals. So I really appreciate the, the Hiawatha report. Absolutely. Agreed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our business is concluded. This meeting is adjourned.